Hello and welcome to a video about probably my favorite OOTP bug ever. This one I had noticed myself because uh, I'm still pretty early on in my new OOTP 23 save. However, some of the more adventurous folks on Reddit and the OOTP community forums found this out uh, by simming far enough into the future to really notice something, which is that the draft development is busted right now. And uh, I'm being pretty lighthearted about it because it hasn't affected my save, but if you're far enough in the future, this could be a save breaking bug. Uh, and I'll be able to show you why in the editor in, here in just a moment. But uh, first of all, I want to just point out a few things that you wouldn't be able to tell exactly what's going on um, early on. Uh, I certainly did in the first draft, but there is an option within OOTP to allow players as they're generated in the background for them to continue developing. So rather than having something where um, if you look at you know your autoplay dates uh, during the season, you'll see usually like April or May, the draft pool will be revealed and in the you know, in the past, that would be pretty static from there. You wouldn't have player development until the players were actually drafted. Um, in recent years, I want to say 21 or 22, that feature uh, came on board and, you know, it made a lot more sense because, yeah, guys in college or high school are going to develop throughout the year. Um, they don't just take three months and stay static. Um, you know, that was more of a video game convenience than realism. So that was added. And uh, this year, uh, what you'll see is that a lot of players are coming out of the gate, you know, very well developed, especially for people who have higher talent change ram randomness. It seems like, you know, the more ability for those ratings to change, the more they are in a lot of cases. And they kind of spiral where you'll see a lot of posts about people uh, having issues with player development, seeing a lot of MLB guys ready in the draft. Um, this is uh, from the Reddit thread, uh, thanks to everybody in here who posted about it. Um, but it reminded me of some other posts I had seen about guys who, like, you know, this reliever, first round draft pick, 80 stuff, 75 control, right out of college, and um, you know, just the second year of a save. Uh, and this by itself wouldn't be too out of the ordinary. There have been players, especially pitchers um, and closers who have come out of college and later in the year have been called up. Um, for me, the I remember Chad Cordero and Houston Street, I think, came up in either consecutive years or the same year um, and were closing games after competing in the College World Series. So it's not unheard of for something like this to happen, although he certainly looks a lot better than you'd expect from your normal draft prospect. But what happened is that this sort of continues and the more you change your TCR settings and probably also your uh, rating adjustments where you can influence you know whether there's more power or contact in the draft you know specific ratings like that that can probably also uh, interact with this and compound into really highly developed players so what you can see here is in someone else's save, this is the first year draft full of, looks like nine, eight or nine pitchers who are above 70 current ability. And looks like all but one of those is a starter. So you can see how quickly this could change the makeup of the entire league to have a whole bunch of you know, college age starting pitchers come in and immediately be top of the rotation starters which that would be unheard of to have, you know, more than, you know, one or two. Like we've seen a Mark Pryor or, you know, the occasional guy like that, but an entire draft of that would be pretty, you know, generationally defining and it happens year after year. Um you can also see on to a lesser extent it just happens and dramatically impacts ratings this is um, looks like, yeah, 2022, 20, 2023. 20, so first or second draft and you have a guy with a 200 out of 80 grade curveball. 
So just weird, random things happening like this in the player development. And the good news is um, there is a patch coming. Um, OTP has acknowledged it, uh, acknowledged it yesterday, and then today uh, announced that there is going to be uh, it is going to be covered in this next patch, which I believe they've announced is at the end of this week or um, should be pretty soon after that, if not. Um, usually the first patch of the year is within a week or two of the launch. So that is the good news, um, is that this will be fixed, um, but it does lead to some very weird results, and it compounds more and more in the future. So I started a league, default MLB settings, I didn't change any of the player development or anything like that. Um, I am displaying one to a hundred and more than max, and you'll see why, because we need to, to see just how busted this is. But besides that, uh, and this is hundred percent accuracy for this test, but otherwise no changes to player development or talent change randomness. Um, and then everything else is just default settings. So if you go in and look at the league stats, and look at team statistics for pitching, overall things don't look too different because um, League Evolution is off, so there's no changes to offense or pitching or anything else. So what you'll see is something that looks pretty, you know, pretty normal, like modern day. Uh, AL has a 250 batting average, um, about a 740 OPS, 4.3 ERA. Um, sorry, this is the NL, but it's very similar in the AL too. So you can see nothing too crazy. The strikeout rate uh, is about, you know, one per inning. So uh, here, yeah, 21,000 innings, 21,000 strikeouts, NL, very similar. So, I mean, high strikeout rate, but, you know, nothing that, you know, looks too extraordinary. It's not like, you know, it's a 50% strikeout rate or anything like that. So the league totals are looking pretty normal. The league averages seem fine. Um, and that's really due to the way that OTP's game engine works um, with league totals and sort of how they represent a, you know, a percentage chance of an event occurring. Um, I won't go into too much depth there, but um, if you've played perfect team, what you'll notice is that even as the level of competition increases, the league stats are in a pretty narrow band. Like, you know, if they're set to modern day, you know, you might one year see, you know, a 740 OPS for the league average. Next year, maybe 750 or 730, but you're really not going too far above or below that. And even as you rise in the rankings and you see more powerful cards, you end up with the same league totals, but the cards that were good enough in maybe Iron League are going to start struggling in bronze and then by the time you get to silver they're you know replacement level or below and you you get to even crazy levels like gold diamond and perfect where you know the cards that are dominating and you know producing 10 or 12 war at maybe gold by perfect they're just average players because you have to be that good to even you know to even be on a, a roster in there. And really that same principle applies throughout the game engine where if you just edited everybody to have, you know, max contact, the batting average is going to stay the same. It's just going to lead to some, you know, wonky results in looking at individual players. So all that to, you know, lead into what's happening here is that everything looks really normal until you get to these ratings. And firstly, you know, this is, one to a hundred scale. I mean, the movement ratings look awesome. Control, this looks like a fantastic staff. And these Orioles were competing for the wild card. Um, and you can see here, if you sort, so a 246 stuff rating out of a hundred. And that guy put up a nearly five ERA. Did strike out a lot of guys, as you'd expect. But you see here someone 104 stuff who in, you know, if you dropped him into a modern game, this guy would be an absolute ace. And he is a long reliever putting up negative two war for Baltimore. Just ridiculous. Uh, if you look at his editor ratings, you'll see 
it starts, you know, his pitches look pretty reasonable. It looks like he's got great pitches. You know, um, these ratings are uh, to 250 is the max, but usually about 200 is what would display as a 100 on the 1 to 100 scale. And so you see 208 stuff out of that. So he should be absolutely amazing. And you look at the resulting stats estimate, uh, and usually in a normal league, this would be pretty accurate. It says he should have a you know a two point zero three fielding independent uh, pitching. You know, like his his FIP would be ludicrous, and he's putting up a negative two WAR, and the estimate was two point four WAR out of you know a thousand played appearances against. So just Pretty crazy stuff here. Um, actually, probably a little bit better. It looks like um, I didn't have the uh, right numbers there. But in either case, you can start seeing how this could be a problem if the bottom of your bullpen, your mop-up guy, is better than every MLB pitcher currently. <laughs> um, and, you know, you look at this guy. I mean, the ratings are stupid. And he was a li- he was a good number two starter, maybe a borderline ace with a little bit more luck. So very quickly we scroll down. All of his pitches are two hundred to three hundred. His stuff is four hundred and eighty seven. And in this, the estimate is that he shouldn't give up uh, an earned run. Obviously, this is a little bit busted at the extreme because the formula for all of this has you know has to be wrong at these extremes. But you know you're not going to give up ten home runs and have zero earned. That that doesn't work unless you have a really you hit a lot of edge cases with errors. But yeah, just ludicrous. So how this breaks the game is not in you know this becoming a more extreme apocalyptic version of 1968 where you know it's the year of the pitcher and you know the league average is like 220 because of the way the league totals work everything looks normal but essentially what happens is each draft and each draft class is more and more uh strikeout uh, dominant and any other ratings, you know, as well. So what happens is you start seeing these new draft classes quickly push out old draft classes. So within, I'm guessing if you let this go for, you know, 10 years, you'd see a much younger distribution of players in your league versus what would actually happen under normal circumstances, normal player development when you start taking this out 50 years, you start running into really strange cases like this, where you have to be game breakingly busted according to sort of the rating scale that we'd expect to even make it into a major league bullpen. And so eventually you're going to just be cycling through so much talent. It's going to skew really young. Any player will, you know, just outpace all the older players and what happens is if you get enough of a buildup of that you know if you have it happen one or two draft classes not a big deal but if you have it happen three four five and the rotations and bullpens have started to turn over with those new players even the patch you know the patch drops you install it everything looks good you're not going to have this happen anymore or if you adjust the settings which i'll go into in a second even if all that happens, you still have an entire generation of players who have displaced the older players and the younger players won't be able to match that talent level without either amazing luck or, you know, just injuries or you going in and manually injuring slash retiring players because what you just have an essentially an entire generation of overpowered players and the following draft classes are going to be almost like a silent generation who aren't going to have any impact. And you're going to have to wait 10, 15, 20 years of simming for all those players to retire naturally. 
and then you start seeing some normality. So it can be, you know, game breaking in that sense where if you get to this point 50 years in the future, um, let's say if you wanted to play as, you know, your son or grandson and start a, a new career in here, you're going to run into that issue and you're going to have to either you know sim another 20 years to get past it or you're going to have to start a new save so it's something that like i said could very well break an entire save if you're not aware of it happening um but you know you there are lots of ways around it but you know you'll just have to be aware you could do mass player exports edit the ratings import them back things like that but that's a lot of work um, the best way to avoid this overall is to go under players and face gen there's an option uh, you don't want to disable player development entirely that'll create a new set of issues but disable development for draft eligible players that will fix this issue so that you don't have the major you know you don't have those influx of aces early in the save you don't run into you know that compounding effect where you wash out entire generations of players early and then you have to wait for the next one to wash back out so if you do this and disable development for draft eligible players you should fix the issue and avoid it so if you can go ahead and turn that setting on disable development for draft eligible players and save your save before you have to restart it so best of luck in your sim and uh hope you don't have a you know hope you don't find the next weird game breaking bug or if you do please let us know <laughs> happy simming